Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Good to see you guys, and happy to meet Christine Chapman today, joining us for coffee. Thank you. Grateful to be here. Absolutely. Starting to know Christine through Real Housewives of Hoffington and through the Facebook page right. and through some of our initiatives. Yeah. But, then, I, but certainly meeting you on the page, but since we now have over 2,000 members, it's been a while since you joined. Yes. But were you a newcomer to Hopkinton? How did we... I was, I was somewhat of a newcomer to Hopkinton. Um, we moved to Hopkinton in 2012, just okay. around this time. It was Father's Day weekend, I believe, okay. when we moved to Hopkinton. Um, and initially, we came to Hopkinton because I had found a job working at a school in Chestnut Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband had a job um, in Worcester. So this was sort of the happy medium point. <laughs> okay. um, and it was not until three years later, so 2015, where we both sort of started to come into the community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of when we started, I started trying to do a little marketing through the Real Housewives and, and really started to get to know folks through the public school system and through my involvement in the PTA. Well, you have um, an interesting, I was, interesting I was interest. Too, what yes. you've done with the PTA, you've actually got a really nice shout out from the PTA the other day. Is that you have been one of their sponsors for a while with your own education company. And what it, it is called? Excuse me, Chapman, Chapman Education. So, yes. Um, mm -hmm. I ha I've supported them this year. Um, I started off as a volunteer last year. Um, I've been one of the co-VPs at Hopkins. I was part, I was the parent, um, the parent liaison to the superintendent of schools. So Kathy and I got to work together in terms of um, building their, our first parent education forum that mm. happened in January of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a proud and happy volunteer at um, my my son Henry's school um, in the library. So at Ooh. center school, I get to go and do my own version of therapy once a week <laughs> and um, shelf some the, books. You know, and the PTA has actually evolved a lot over the last you know decade yes. or so. I mean, I think Erin Graziano, I, I know she's just ending her yes. year up there, but I think she's actually taken it to another level, a lot more fundraising, a yes. lot more corporate sponsorships and partners involved. Absolutely. And actually some of the events being a little bit more high end, having the Cinco de Mayo event, the having Cinco this, de Mayo bringing event. back the carnival, yes. which is them. Oh. It's very exciting. Yes. We're very excited yes. about the carnival That's coming next endeavor. week. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Aaron and Tara have been amazing, and the executive board has been amazing to work with um, over the course of this past these past two years. And I think we are just so grateful to all of the wonderful volunteers who are making the Hopkinton um, parent community as involved as it can be. Absolutely. Well, and you have two kids here in town. I do. So I do. Tell us about cool. them. You started with a little bit about Henry. Yeah, we um, yeah. <laughs> My little boy Henry um, started at Center School in Kindergarten last year and has really grown and thrived there. Um, and we'll be off to Elmwood. Today is Step Up Day. Um, and then we have um, Celia, who is at Hopkins and has had a wonderful two years there and is looking forward to going off to middle school. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Those are big steps, yeah. Aren't they? yeah, I love it. I love how that, you know. We of course, we raise our kids here, and, yes. and all of us, you know, obviously residents here. But I always loved how the kids, all together, went from one school to the next. And yes. Even though they're going and they know everybody who's moving up to the next grade, it's an exciting thing to be in a new building, new Absolutely. teachers, and certainly the next grade up. Well, middle school is also like this whole new, like you go, yeah. it's a whole cool new adventure. It's cool. cool for school. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're big kids. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's a whole different attitude. You know, next year she'll have nature's classroom. Yes, like she's so very, she, very excited. Yeah, when they get to go away for almost a week. I yes. want to go to nature's classroom. I do, too. I the adult, but my kids would never let me. They would never let me. Michael went with Andrew, be, I went with Melissa. Be a volunteer. So. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't volunteer. They wouldn't let me in. <laughs> <laughs> we were both I won't parent. talk to you. <laughs> we, were vo we were parent volunteers each year. And I used to sub, which was sort of like volunteering. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. just for, And that was so fun. In the high school. Middle school and high school, where they at the time needed more subs. So you're enveloped in education, though, from your day-to-day -day life to actually your career life. Yes, yes. I have, um, I have worked with students and families since I was about 18 years old, quite honestly. I... Um, you were a student in, yourself. <laughs> I was a student myself, but I was also tutoring at a really young age. My family 
Um, I was born and raised in Montreal, and my family um, ended up experiencing some difficult times in Montreal. Um, we ended up moving to South Korea, and we landed there the day I turned 17 years old. Um, it was a tough move, yeah. especially in a really patriarchal okay. society and in a space where I could speak the language but couldn't read and write it. Okay. Um, and I lived there for four years as my parents tried to sort of rebuild and sort of recreate themselves and one of the things that happened at the time was my mom and I decided we were going to go out and tutor so I started tutoring at the age of 17 and had to sort of pretend that I was in college at the time and put on a whole lot of makeup and it was like you know teaching little kids English songs and you know helping them through the ABCs and that sort of evolved into my mom working with business owners who had children that they wanted to send off to private schools and so slowly and surely a business was born that was consulting based so I ended up sort of enveloped in the idea of working in education really through circumstance and through the fact that because of where we had come from and my both my sibling and myself had gone to private school we both you know were in a situation where that became a way in which my mom was able to slowly start to build a business and I helped her do that and that ended up becoming an educational counseling business that sort of worked only with South Korean students and eventually I ended up working with other populations. So it was kind of a, so a crazy time. Yeah. All over the world. But let me just ask yes. this question. Your original focus was on students in South Korea who were going to college in South Korea or in the U.S.? No, they were all looking for opportunities to attend um, schools here in the United okay, States. Okay, so that's what And so they needed it. somebody yes. to sort of help, help them through the, the process. Yes. And then to manage, you know, yes. like Johnny needs, you know, to go to his friend Sylvester's house this mm -hmm. weekend and has mm -hmm. permission to do so, or needs X number of dollars to go and buy something for, you know, lacrosse gear, for sure. example, sure. Um, travel plans and whatnot. Okay. And so I sort of became well, the full gamut of yes. services. Yes. Okay. Concierge. Yes, it was sort of like a concierge and education. Oh, interesting. And for a while, when I was still single, I would have students who came and stayed in my apartment, and I'd mm -hmm. feed them and take them to the mall. I mean, it was a crazy time, but it was a lot. Of I, fun. I think you even posted up recently. You even helped one move out of their dorm. Or I I still do that. I yeah. have a student from France who I recently moved out of his dorm, and he's got stuff stored in my garage. And we'll come back at the end of the summer, and we'll move him back in. So it's when become did, a real global for when focus. When did you move yes. back to the yeah. states? I ended up moving to the states in 1995. Okay and um, settled in Malden, Mass, and um, set up a sort of um, satellite um, business that was going to support the business that was in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got to 2002, 2003, we had sort of separated and become become a different entity that was sort of independent but working collaboratively with my family's business. and. Um, at this point in time, I do not work with many South Korean students. I work with students from the Middle East. I have students in Europe. I have students in New York City, um, in South America, um, and in I have I have students that I work with in you know Miami, Aspen, sort of all over the gamut at this point in time. Not as much in terms of the um, the local reality local, for us, yeah. um, and that's something that I'm working so to try to. Very yes. So that'd be Tell yeah. us more about that initiative. And, and when you say help, um, I think I know what you mean. But define the kinds of things. So talk about what you're looking to do locally, and then a little more granularly, the things that you're hoping to help some of our local sure. do. So I have worked very, very closely with families throughout my career where it's a very sort of one-on-one -on -one relationship, having worked as a, as a college counselor in a private school and worked in admissions at that same private school and as a teacher, um, the reality has been how do I do whatever it takes to help guide students through the process of identifying, applying, and preparing for the college process in whatever way. So whether it's early planning and curriculum, you know, looking at curriculum and activities and empowering students from a coaching level mm -hmm. to working towards just helping them through the actual process of, hey, 
let's let's in a group setting go through the process of filling out that common app and right. knowing that somebody is guiding you through it and your parent you're not feeling like your parents are micromanaging you which is yeah. a big part of the process um, to thinking about brainstorming and getting to a place where you understand that the college essay is very different mm -hmm. from the academic essay that you spent a lifetime learning, you know learning right. how to write and I always say like you spend all of this time in middle school and in high school learning to write an essay in a particular way mm -hmm. and then you get to the college process and they say well now you've got to write a personal statement well what the heck is what that, is that? Yeah. and how am I supposed to draw my audience in what do these statements look like so it's about guiding students through the process okay and so now because of that sorry um, you want to or launching so what I'm what I'm hoping to do um, as we launch programs this summer is to be able to for example I've got a two-hour common application and resume writing group workshop mm -hmm. so students would would come in with their laptops ready to work we would log on and you know get them started on the common application get get most of that common application filled out and work on a resume that is specific to the student that would eventually be used for the college process. Then I have another um, workshop that we're just about to launch that is the sort of conquering the college essay. Work with us for two days, five hours, and get to a place where you've got a solid first draft going, and then you can follow up with our counselors and work towards, you know, looking at some some editing options and getting some feedback on those essays. But for the, yeah, 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 for the family question, though that yeah. has money, <laughs> this is easy, but it's not available to everybody. Well, and for the family who has money, most of those families are going to say, I'm going to hire you one-on-one -on -one for right. a whole lot of for a whole lot of money on an hourly basis. When we're doing group programming, it becomes a fraction of the cost of somebody who, who might end up um, working with me on a private level. And one of the things that I've wanted to do is try to give back to the community by being able to provide what I do at a lower cost, but also by providing scholarships. So we've got five workshops set up for this, um, you know, five different time periods. So it would be 10 workshops in total. And um, what I'm hoping to do, if students are willing to write a little essay and sort of talk about what sets them apart and makes them unique as college applicants and why such a program might be helpful to them, what I was hoping for was to get two to three seats in each of my workshops as mm -hmm. a fully funded reality where students could apply and if they are chosen there would be three seats in each um, in each of the five different time slots to be able to come for free. That's, that's and awesome. I think what you've that's done really is actually use some local resources to partner with too. So these these are going to be available locally. Um, Christine set up a partnership with HCA yes. and we'll be hosting mm -hmm. Hoppington students and surrounding right there. She's also set up a partnership with the Franklin Country Club and be yes. able to do something. So bringing something very local that she's done, you know, I mean, we've globally, yes. <laughs> globally, I mean, in meeting globally, I mean, she's done some very, very high profile people and sometimes those people don't want to be the ones making a call to school. And she was telling me about a situation with like the University of Texas where that family did not want to be able to make the call. She was able to step in and say, I'm guiding this person, I'm doing this, and mm -hmm. yes. help out. And then that, that is now being brought very much more locally in a group setting. And I think yes. that's very, very cool. It's a fascinating area. I've done work with uh, the Hult International School. Yes. You may be familiar with them. Yes. That's a graduate school program. But just, they also yeah. have an undergraduate program. Oh, they do yes, now. They OK, do. excellent. They do. Excellent. Yes. It's very exciting. Well, mm -hmm. and I've done some alumni interviewing and, of course, meet these excellent college applicants and it's so interesting to see the spectrum yes of very well qualified students but but the spectrum and and then um you know, the right fit then you know they're uh, expressing always, themselves always in, yes um, yes so it's yeah. it's interesting to see i i just wish every kid could be coach I, Coached only in the sense that to help them get comfortable with who they are. Yes. Really help them shine. Be it's not who they are in the right way. Up. No. It's helping. Yeah, I, I was talking to a parent whose son, great baseball star, he's injured. Mm -hmm. So he thought his ticket to college was baseball. Well, he's going to be a senior next year. So let's talk about how you make lemonade. So Absolutely. Yeah. So Excuse talk me. about some stories about how you've helped kids. 
I think a lot of the times when I start working with students, they're really scared about the college mm -hmm. process. And it's so different Daunting. from when we were going to college, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I applied yeah. to five schools. I got into all five schools. Yep. Never thought that anything would be any different. And the whole idea of having to strategize and, and, and get a list that is balanced, for example, with your reach and your mid-range and your quote-unquote safer yeah. schools um, was completely foreign to me. And so I think one of the advantages that I feel I can bring to the table in working with students in terms of coaching is this idea of helping them build build a profile mm -hmm. you know under you know understanding what they do and understanding that even if they weren't necessarily trying there were patterns in their yeah, lives, right. whether, you know, through the passions that they've developed over the years. And yeah. one of the jobs I feel that is that is crucial in my work with students is to be able to help students figure out who they are just based on what they've done, the courses they've chosen, and to be able to allow for them to start feeling comfortable with who they are and confident about their achievements. And I think the, the most flattering pieces of um, feedback I get from parents is, so-and-so has really transformed. Like, didn't feel like they had anything going for them, and after five or six sessions in working with you, they understand that they have a profile that's developed um, based on their, say, you know, passion for art and their involvement in community service that they were just doing and didn't realize sort of made, gelled made into, exactly, of who they are. Right. exactly. Exactly, or even, I imagine, even who they are, uh, socially among their peers, whether yes. they're a leader, a planner, yes. a doer, you know, these even if it's those sorts of things, who yes. they are um, in their own natural habitat, so to Absolutely. speak. You know? I mean, Absolutely. the pressure's intense now. It just, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazingly intense. It is. The, whether it's coming from, you know, their legacy or that, you know, pressure wanting to be in an Ivy oh. to, you know, if I don't get into one of these, I'm not going to get a job. My parents are going to be disappointed. Right. You know, the person sitting next to me in class just got into Harvard. I'm, you know, how am I going to get in? Well, right. Yeah. Well, I also think it's a double-edged sword with a common app. It allows students to apply to far more many schools. So mm -hmm. schools get saturated. So how do you differentiate yourself? I can imagine. How do you that. rise to the top? Every college gets, I don't know how many thousands, thousands more than over, they can take. And they're all qualified. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Right. I don't know. I, I would I hate to be in college admissions. I'm God. working with an engineering school now. And I, I'm not in that arena. I'm in the human resources field. Sure. But, you know, just supporting those professionals that are in admissions, the stress, the pressure, the responsibility that yes. they feel. It's tough work. Well, and, and there are many admissions colleagues who literally show up in the in these admissions meetings um, with Kleenex boxes because they know yeah. that they're going to advocate for these kids and they've learned to develop relationships with these they're kids gonna cry. and they're yeah. going to cry because it becomes a really personal right. thing, especially I think at the boarding school level. You yeah. know, um, but you know, do you work with kids for boarding school or, or just college? I'm thinking I, I work with work. both. Yeah. I, okay. I do work with both. Okay. Um, and over the years, it's become much more college. Thing. Focused, yeah. um, and at the beginning of my career, it was much more prep school focused. Gotcha. Yes, yes. So interesting. Well, and, and now how do people find you? Honestly, um, over the last um, over the last five years, it's really been word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, and and I've been very very grateful to have that kind of a reality in my life. Um, it's it's been humbling. Yeah, I know you have a website. We'll get that. We up do, there, and you also have a Facebook page. Yes, and there's others out there that do this. Uh, I think you know one of the reasons we had you on the show is what you're looking to bring into town with the whole scholarship right. and get some of this going. Yes, so that a greater demographic has access to this really right. valuable service. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, you know I I can't stress. Um, one, the pressure these students feel, but how much having somebody guide you through, you being the student, finding what is your personality yes. versus the student that has just been simply checking off boxes in resume writing. Well, yes. Fit him or herself into the profile exactly. that the school wants yes. and so forth. <clears throat> I mean, I think there are times that you probably meet a student and they may say, I want to go here, and that you actually have to coach them and say, well, no, you're actually better right. than here. And that's sometimes a tough pill to take. That, like, Absolutely. Well, my whole life has been like, I'm going here, I'm going here. My father, my grandfather, 
I'm going there too. And it's like, really, you're not the best fit, but have you ever considered here? And being able to guide them yes. in a better direction that's well, better for them and, you know, this emotional pressure that they feel. You know, I it's think here, it's so true. So many kids in New England, and maybe it's the same way regionally, you would know better than me, really want to stay in New England. I mean, they just, and I think that just adds to the competitive pressure. Yes, it does. You know, we have a ton of schools, but there's still a limited number. And, you know, I've often heard, now both my kids did stay in New England, one in Rhode Island, one in Boston, but, um, you know, they, kids don't, and I know the guidance counselors suggest this to students to think beyond your regional area, just yes. in terms of, you know, opportunity. I had the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Went far. Yeah. But I think, I think um, a lot of these colleges are looking for geographic diversity, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think that there are some more options if parents are willing to look further afield mm -hmm. for, for scholarship right. opportunities and, and just to sort of broaden their horizons. Exactly. But I have noticed that People's in New England, they, they, do, they do like to stay more close so to than home. Other yes, I, feel like. I, yeah. I agree. So when does the, um, the session start at HCA? Um, I've actually just moved our June session because I realized that we had timed it with the last day of school. Okay. So it was supposed to be June 21st, June 22nd, but our HCA sessions are July 10th and July 12th. Mm -hmm. And then August 13th, um, I think it's August 12th and 14th. And then we've rescheduled our June to September 13th and 15th. So, so there will be room. I think I'm going to get my room. daughter in the reschedule <laughs> yeah. June because uh, she's actually interning at the State House during your July. Wow. And we're on vacation awesome. during your August. So, so I, cool. I will tell you, parents of juniors, rising seniors, uh, speaking from experience, and all three of my children had a different experience, if you can get your child to at least draft up the college yes. app during the summer, because mm -hmm. senior year hits and it's social and it's busy and it's stuff happening just do it now <laughs> and and it's better as you said as opposed to the parent with the big stick yes it's wow. nice to have a coach and so somehow they hear it better when it's not from mom or dad well you know it's it's so interesting because i think what happens is students get to this place where they become juniors and they sort of know and feel in their hearts that they're starting to separate from their parents, mm -hmm. right? So that like separation period happens. And, and so the last thing they want, it seems, is to be micromanaged by their parents. And, <laughs> and so a third party who shows up and is able to guide them and that's their job and that's what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. sometimes can be helpful. I've had families say to me, oh, well, you're so lucky when it comes time for you to guide your kids through the process. Oh, no. You'll be able to do it myself. I'm like, no, no. they I'm won't have to hire to someone. They're not going to want, you know, and I'm not going to want to micromanage them right, through yeah. that process. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But you got a wage after that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. Although they're already thinking about it in fifth grade, which I think is so sad. Are they are because they're well, like the school. No, is I've heard way, about yeah. bus conversations, about oh. you know students and where they're planning to go off to college already, and I'm like, oh my I gosh, let's grade, let them be kids. Where I wanted to go to college. Yeah. I started talking. Did about you sixth really? Grade. Yeah. I knew where I wanted to go. Um, my son started talking about in and about eighth grade where he wanted to go. Wow. And let's have a quick and, it, and it discussion. was and, it, and we both ended up. The, it was. This is very tunnel-minded. This is where we want to go. Mm -hmm. and, and you work and, towards that. And, and that's great. That. But the other thing, and this is sort of the antithesis of what you're offering, is that we forget that college really isn't for everybody. And there's some wonderful right. trade schools and wonderful um, programs. And we need the 360 of everybody out there. Mm -hmm. So I do also encourage parents to understand and help uh, work with someone to understand who your child is. I mean, my middle son uh, did go to college, but we sat back and had a serious discussion with him about his ability to focus and that we encouraged him to do something that was a little more interdisciplinary with, with not only the brain, but the body and, yes. and steered him to architecture because if he went engineering, it, 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 he would have, killed himself, but working in the studio and the years in that, yes. um, just to have that, that balance, because that's who he was. So I think that's Absolutely. the point of your whole work, is yeah. to right. make and that mind and body with yes. all your students, and Absolutely. whether it's engineering or art or, or you know, Absolutely. nonprofit 
you know, creation, yeah. entrepreneurship, I wonder. Social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneur. I've got Absolutely. lots of entrepreneurs yeah. and, and there's so much happening. I think, I think my mission is to help families and students um, help their children uncover their authentic selves, right? Absolutely. And to be able to show that to, to those folks that they need to that they need to connect with as they go through this process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, with the school year ending, mm -hmm. you'll be ramping right into this summer mm -hmm. program. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to probably next week announce on probably the Real Housewives Facebook page at least how parents, because I think those moms are going to be the key of getting kids to write the, schol the yes, scholarship yes. Um, essays for you. So if you're able to get us something that we can get posted up and maybe get heat blasted out mm -hmm. to people, would be great so parents know when it's happening, when it's happening where and um, how their kids could have opportunity Get for a scholarship. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. And stuff like that. I mean, I mean, we're hitting summer and things seem to move really fast as soon as school mm -hmm. gets out. Yeah. So it's Any last minute shout outs of what's going on well, I know in town? Timlin, Timlin will be Before happening we, this weekend um, or is, the following weekend. Um, it's Father's Day coming up. Um, so there's, I mean, there's stuff going on. Again, there's like the St. John's rummage sale, the carnival for the PTA that we talked about earlier. Yep. Yeah. When does the farmer's um, market start? It starts. I'm forgetting it's in June. I'm gonna forget it's the date. Soon. We're gonna post soon. it all up yeah, we'll there. <laughs> Sounds awesome. But there's a lot of things that do in our area that are kind of like the the drive to day plans and things that you can think of that are, you know, as we plan, we always end up in southern Maine. But I think a lot of people like, I you know, you can hit things like the Berkshires and the Quabbin and, and some of well, these day trips. I think it's kind of fun to see where people are heading in the summer and kind of summer starting. Summer starting. Really? Summer starting. Well, we're so happy to meet you. Thanks yeah, for thank being so on much. our show. Cheers. We'll have talking you. about Cheers. your work. Cheers. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank See you. you next time. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you possibility. It starts early, before we even know what it is. Thanks to people who make it happen. Together, we are possibility. This show often talks to people who have interesting hobbies or careers or different things that they have going on that affect our community. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. There is a huge need for providing food for individuals and family. And that's the key, yeah. it's yeah. working well together. You can see more episodes online